Hello and welcome to the Omnex webinar, Key Changes and Food Industry Forces Impacting FSSC 22000. Today's presenter is Chad Keimel. Chad Keimel is the President and CTO of Omnex, an international consulting and training organization headquartered in the United States. Over the course of Chad's successful career, he has served on the Malcolm Baldridge Board of Examiners and has received numerous Quality Achievement Awards, including the Quality Professional of the Year Award, awarded to him by the American Society for Quality. Chad has developed and teaches Omnex's ISO 9001, IATF 16949, ISO 14001, ISO 45001, FSSC 22000, and Integrated Management Systems, which combines multiple standards into one system. Under Chad's direction, Omnex has worked with many of the world's largest and leading organizations, including Coke, Philips, Magna, and many other Fortune 500 companies worldwide. Omnex has been involved in the innovation and of application of HACCP using failure mode and effects analysis and control plans with integrated quality and food safety combined. Chad is a registered lead auditor who conducts hundreds of audits, including multiple audits in food safety management systems. Chad has published numerous papers and multiple books on management standards and quality. Take it away, Chad. Miles, thank you. And welcome, everyone, to Omnix's Key Changes and Food Industry Forces Impacting FSSE 22000. Very happy to be here with you today and um, share with you our thoughts on where things are going with a number of different factors affecting the food industry. As I present to you here today, I'm joined by Omnex's Crystal Young. Crystal has worked her whole life in the food industry and also was with the FDA prior to joining Omnex. And we have Omnex's risk expert, Mr. Greg Gruska, also in the room. You may know that um, Greg and I, along with Dan Reed, published a book for ASQ on integrated management systems and Greg, uh, one of the case studies we showed in there was also about a food company. And uh, we have examples of how we integrated quality and food safety risk analysis. Let's move on. Let me go right to the agenda here. Folks, as I go through the different slides on Omnex, just want to let you know we have enterprise quality and enterprise integrated management systems which includes food safety and quality a software and Omnix is absolutely global having helped multiple different industries uh, all over the world and as you may or may not know we're a 33 year old company headquartered here in uh, Ann Arbor Michigan all right, let's go right to the agenda. Here's what I'll do with you today. We'll talk to you a little bit of review of what has brought us um, to at this point. And we'll talk about the Global Food Safety Initiative by the Food Forum. And then we'll talk to you about one of the GFSI schemes, the FSSE 22000. A key part of this FSSE 22000 is the ISO 22000 that's in its midst. This ISO 22000 has undergone a dramatic change. We'll explain that to you and we'll go through some of the key changes. And then of course, in the midst of all this change, we also have the Food, Food Safety Modernization Act by the US government which has resulted in the PCQI. And many of you are tussling with how to handle the PCQI. And we'll, we'll share some thoughts with you on that. And then we'll look at how do we move forward with this 
big change of FSSC 22,000 preparation. All right. So let's start where things started, which is the Consumer Goods Forum. Who are they? Well, they are actually headquartered in, in Paris, and all the large food companies in the world belong to this group. And the food retailers of the world actually got together many years ago and requested one GFSI audit and that their suppliers needed to be certified. It really was Walmart that required all their suppliers to be certified, which started then a big chain reaction, which has brought us to today. And this GFSI is only one of the strategic pillars of the Consumer Goods Forum. All right, move on. So what is this GFSI? Folks, I'm going to give you some information that you may not have known. I find all of the different people in the food industry working on these standards but not knowing some facts. So let me tell you some things. Number one, the GFSI is a benchmarkable standard which you can actually download from the web. The, you know, every of these nine recognized schemes that I have on the slide have benchmarked themselves against GFSI, and they have to meet GFSI at a minimum. So what are the three most common and most popular standards? Well, really, BRC and SQF. By far, these were the two dominant players when FSSC 22000 came into the picture. Now, why did Omnix many years ago elect to pick FSSC 22000? Plain and simple, folks, it's the only standard which is ISO. If you look at SQF, it's, it's got what I called, and I have, you know, look at the time, a very old version of ISO 9001, sort of like a 1994 version of ISO 9001. And, and BRC is also non-ISO. But the British retailers, you know, the, the BRC standard and the SQF by far dominated the scheme, the, the you know, food industry. Then along comes FSSC 22000. It is now today one of the largest schemes on its own. The largest food companies have elected to go FSSC 22000. And if you're attending this webinar, you are indeed FSSC 22000 and you made a good choice. Why FSSC 22000? Why ISO 22000? Well, because we all want to be, you know, have ISO 9001 and you want a QMS. All right? Now, or if you're like, Somebody like Nestle, you have a QMS, you have an EMS, a health safety system, and a food safety management system, which is integrated. And of course, kudos to you, and this is what you need to do today in this marketplace that we're in, which is a very, you know, uh, tough marketplace where everybody is trying to get an edge. All right. So some of the things that have happened meanwhile is that the FSSC 22000 has been updated based on the FDA's FSMA Act. And really, there are requirements for FSSC 22000 which are over and above ISO 22000 and um, been influenced. Well, what I wanted to say, it's in Rev 4. I'll just say this also, Greg, this Rev 4 that the FSSC 22000 put together is an integration with the old version of ISO 22000. But these are standalone requirements, very easily transportable to the new version of ISO 22000. All right. We'll explain to you why I'm saying that a little bit later. So one of the other things that the FSSE folks have come up with is um, 
uh, uh, scheme what they call for small and low risk suppliers. And it has two levels, a foundation level and an intermediate level. And you can think about that as something as a start before they become FSSC 22,000. And um, what else can we say? Let's compare the two here. So the FSSC global markets covers minimum requirements based on HACCP, the GFSI, minimum requirements in food safety, and they're not benchmarked or recognized by GFSI. All right? Just to make sure you know, the reason FSSC 22000 is being implemented by your companies is because it's a GFSI standard. And uh, Crystal, the reason we want GFSI standards is really because it's recognized by the food forum. And, and the retailers of the food forum who got together and said, hey, one audit and you should be recognized. Now, let me tell you the, the, the problems the food industry see is finding is many people don't know BRC, BRC and SQF and FSSC are equivalent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see a large customers, SQF, go into a supplier's FSSC and say, you need to be SQF. <laughs> and really, they're all supposed to be uniform. Next, we have the scheme. This FSSC 22000 is headquartered in the Netherlands. It's Dutch. And I forget exactly. I, I do know they were started by the uh, a coalition. I forget the name of the coalition, but I think they're water-related. But, of course, FSSC 22000 has evolved and developed much, much more than the initial days, you know, seven, eight years ago. So, what is the benefits of IS FSSC 22000? Well, first what they did, this group took ISO 22000 and they tried benchmarking it, and it failed. So when it failed, they added some additional requirements to the FSSC itself, because as you all know, folks, you know, when, when Miles introduced you, he told you, I'm on the ISO 9001 committee. I'm on the 14001 committee. I'm on the 13485 medical devices committee. I'm on the 45000. So this ISO 22000 is by the ISO group. And there's a committee responsible for uh, food safety, ISO 22000. And... Um, it's not easy to add requirements because it's voted on by members all over the world. So it's much easier when there's a gap adding it to write to the FSSC 22,000 requirements. And that's how the FSSC 22,000 requirements came in. So it uses independent international standards, and that is a big deal for all of us. Second, folks, they use third-party registrars that you can use for ISO 9001, ISO 14001, or 45001. If you don't know what these standards are, ask me a question, and I'll provide you an answer. Okay? And that's what they call the integrity program, the program that they run with their registrars and auditors. And, of course, as I mentioned to you, global acceptance, and a big use by large manufacturers and retailers. So FSSC 22000, as far as I'm concerned, is for Omnix also the right choice. But Greg and Crystal, Omnix is going to still offer BRC and SQF because those added to FSSC are the three big food safety standards that we all need to be in, 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 a part of. So when you look at FSSC 22000, here are the three parts of FSSC 22000 from a food safety viewpoint. Number one, ISO 22000. Number two, there are prerequisite programs. This prerequisite programs depends on your, whether you're a packaging company, whether you are 
food manufacturer, whether you're into catering, whether you're into farming. Okay? So that's the PRPs. And then we have additional requirements in FSSC 22000 itself. Put three of these together, and you can get FSSC 22000. Now the next level is adding ISO 9001 to it, and you get FSSC 22000Q. All right, folks? So this is really the structure of FSSC 22000. And these, then, that I'm showing you as dash 2, dash 3, dash uh, 1 are really the prerequisites. So dash 1 is prerequisites for food manufacturing. Dash 2 is for catering. Dash 3 is for farming. Dash 4 is packaging. Dash 6 is animal feed. And um, these are you know, some of the more popular food scopes people are adding in. And FSSE is continually adding in additional scopes. So, folks, when we do the training, when we do the generic training, we cover one of these prerequisites. And I, I think because we either do packaging, because a number of packaging companies come to us, or we do food manufacturing, because a number of food manufacturing companies come to us. And pretty much these prerequisites are fairly common with some tweaks between the different sectors. You know, when I try to implement these inside companies, the big pushback we get sometimes is they say, well, well why should we do this? We're just a packaging company. And, and sometimes they need convincing, yes, you know, I, I hate to tell somebody, well, you have to do it or you're not going to get certified. I hate to tell people that. So I try to explain to them why it's needed and why these prerequisites were written by the experts in their own industry. So this was not written by somebody else. It is written by the experts in, in food manufacturing or catering or farming. All right. So this brings right to the next section here of who can be FSSE 22000? So you can see here, from farming to manufacturing of foods to chemicals that go into food, food packaging, transportation and logistics. So somebody like a large food manufacturer may have a different scope in the logistics part and a different scope in the food manufacturing parts, and if they happen to have catering, a different scope in the catering part of the company. So here's what we see then. ISO 22000 are the sector prerequisites, and additional requirements of FSSC is FSSC 22000. Add to it ISO 9001, and you get FSSC 22000-Q. Folks, is that fairly clear? All right. So for this FSSC 22000Q, you will get an integrated audit of FSSC 22000 and ISO 9001. And only FSSC 22000 certified companies can obtain FSSC 22000Q. And the certification body, of course, might, must be licensed just like the training organization Omnex is licensed by FSSC 22000. So, what are we talking about here? Number one, that FSSC 22000 has changed. Now what we're going to tell you is that ISO 22000, which is one of the three parts of the standard, has also changed in a very dramatic fashion. A couple of things to keep in mind is that ISO 22000 is not GFSI, right? It's not. FSSC is recognized, GFSI, ISO 22000 is not recognized, okay? And um, if you do ISO 22000, PRPs are not, rec uh, is not mandatory. You know, though we say ISO 22000 to FSSC 22000 is relatively easy, 
You know, at the same time, you have to implement the PRPs. And you need to have a good HACCP program. All right. So who is this ISO? Well, they're based out of Geneva, Switzerland. And the members to this ISO is really, uh, you know, 165 member countries. You know, typically when I meet, I just meet in the USA because I'm part of what is called the US TAG or the Technical Advisory Group. But every so often, you know, you're nominated by your country to go represent your country, and that's when you meet everybody else in the world. And we did that just a little while ago. And, and we go to all these interesting locations. Uh, we were in Bali, and uh, the next one is in a little island called Azores. I had to look that up and Google it myself. It's one of the European islands. So what is ISO 22000? It's an international independent standard voted on by member countries of ISO. I did want to mention one thing. The technical committee is actually 34, which signifies to you that the food, in, food standards are really old. You know, compared to this, the ISO 9001 is 176 came in much, much later. ISO 14001 is 207. All right. It's considered state-of-the-art best practices. It focuses on supply chain, aligned with Codex Alimentarius, and there's a family of standards. So you saw this a little earlier, that many of these, by the way, were called PAS standards. Um, Publicly available standards. Right. So, as Greg said, publicly available standards. And where are PAS standards coming from, uh, Greg? Most generally, BSI. Okay? BSI is a, almost like a little writing engine. They write all these different standards. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. They have a lot of standards. And uh, many of these were BSI standards to start off, start off with. So I'm not going to make a big deal here. If you understand, we, you, I had a question in your minds earlier of dash one, dash two, dash three. Well, this list is going to help you, okay? All right. Let's move on here. What is the scope of ISO 22000? Well, to plan, implement. So it's for somebody in the food chain who, is a, you know, who does plan, implement, operate, maintain, and, um, okay, update an FSMS, evaluate and assess mutually agreed customer food safety requirements. You have to do, uh, part of the FSSC, you have to communicate. Communication to, to your customer if there's a problem and to the supply chain for things like traceability and food safety is key in, this F, in the ISO 22000. And, of course, you have to conform to a stated food safety policy. For folks, if you saw FSSC 22000 is got about, you know, a different scope, ISO 22000 is called generic. It is almost like ISO 9001 in quality is generic, meaning anybody from a Burger King to a consultant can become ISO 9001. But if you try to become AS9100, which is for the aerospace industry, you have to be an aerospace company. Mm -hmm. Similarly here, ISO 22000 is generic. FSSC 22000 is for people from catering, farming, and so on. What has happened to the ISO 22000? <coughs> what we can say is one of the biggest changes is really the ISO body themselves wrote an Annex SL. This Annex SL says, hey, every management system standard has to use what is called a high-level structure, which I'll explain to you. So ISO 22000 has adopted this high-level structure, which has ended uh, you know, in having the ISO 22000 adopt 
this overall structure or table of contents. Folks, interestingly enough, ISO 9001 has the same structure. ISO 14001 has the same structure. ISO 45001, which is new health and safety standard, has the same structure. And so one of the prime motives to adopt this high-level structure was the need for integration of standards. And so they understood there is a proliferation of standards and that companies really need to have a technique where they don't have these standalone silos. So Omnix has worked with a number of food companies integrating their management systems. And in this one organization, Greg, we went to teach them, and maybe you also were a part of the rollout. We went for this large company. And here we found, here are the, the uh, sanitary, sanitation people, one group of sanitation people. There's a group of quality people who came. There's a group of <laughs> food safety people who came. There's a group of environmental you know, management systems people that came. So this company that was trying to integrate standards was heavily siloed and had all these you know, redundant number of people. So, and of course, what we did is help them identify how to integrate the silos into one management system. And that was such a big deal. Such a big deal in terms of how you efficiently, you know, operate a food safety company. Folks, so here are then the ISO 22000 2018 clauses. So I can just tell you, since, you know, I know ISO 9000 really well, that you see some commonalities you do see some slight changes that 4.4 is a food safety management system where in ISO 9001, it really talks about the process approach. FSMS alludes to it in some fashion. And of course, they have also adopted a process approach, okay? And, and the food safety has to be integrated back into the ISO 9001 process approach. Next, we have leadership. This is one of the big changes where they say who is responsible for food safety. They say leadership is responsible for food safety. I'm going to talk quite a bit about this. Folks, we highly recommend right in the, in the, in the beginning bringing top management in and educating them and making them understand whatever it is your strategy is for implementing it, and we will offer you for you in this webinar a handful of key strategies for your, for your FSSE 22000 implementation. So one of the things we want to do in this webinar is share with you what we think are the key changes affecting you know, ISO 22000, which is a part of FSSE 22000. Number one, folks, we all knew HACCP, but what we want to tell you is there is now an organizational risk management. So the organization must plan and implement actions to address organizational risks. And these are the risks from helping us meet the intended results of the food safety management systems. And addressing risks serves as a base, they say, to increase FSMS effectiveness, achieve improved results, and prevent negative effects. All right. Folks, I'll get ahead of myself here for a bit to intrigue you. Of course, this HACCP needs to be integrated with PCQI. All right. So you don't have a PCQI plan, and you don't have a HACCP plan, and both of them not fully integrated. All right, here's a summary of change. And folks, 
those of you at Omnix have been implementing this high-level structure since 2015. So a little bit, this is old hat to us, and I have presented this so many times that sometimes I forget it might be fairly new to you. But I do imagine, folks, can I just get some comments from you in, in, your, in terms of questions? Can you let me know if you have already implemented um, ISO 9001 in your organization? What I really want to know is this high-level structure new? You can just say, yes, it's new. No, it's not new. So I get a good feel for where each of you are in your understanding. So in this summary of understanding the key changes, let me just mention to you, we need to understand the context and the interested party expectations in terms of food safety. Number three, big change is really the process approach in 4.4. And then you can say also the food safety policy has to be in line with your context and your company's strategic direction. And if you haven't changed your food safety policy in 10 years or 7 years or 8 years or something like that, here's your opportunity, folks, to rethink your food safety policy, but rethink it also as you rethink your ISO 9001. And then, of course, you have 6.0 and 6.1, which is planning. And you have to come up with actions to address risks and opportunities. And... These risks and opportunities need to be integrated back into the processes of the food safety management system. This would be like a summary of the key changes. And this is a process Omnix, is, Omnix uses that ties together 4.1 context, 4.2 interested party expectations, with the vision, mission, policies of the organization to identify your intended results in 6.1, which is your goals and objectives. Out of these come the KPIs that measure the goals and objectives, which are then bolstered by key processes and process measures. What is the story behind this? The story behind this to top management is, look, you cannot improve results. Results are the result of how the company operates. What you can improve are processes. So focus on the process measurables. Improve the process measurables. The processes improve, thus helping you meet your KPI, helping you meet your goal and objective, which then satisfies your interested party expectations within your context of the organization. This, folks, is an integrated process for what we call Q, E, H, S, and F, S. Stands for, of course, quality, environmental health and safety, and food safety. The risk and opportunity analysis is against the processes or the KPIs, if you want to think of it that way. If you want to do it that way, you can. This is what Omnix calls the BOS, and we have training if you know, want to use this to help you implement 414261, 10.3, just continual improvement. All right. One of the big changes here is the leadership responsibilities. And the leadership, leadership responsibility is, number one, they need to understand and participate in this business operating system. They need to understand there's one operating system and that the KPIs and the reviews all incorporate quality, environmental, food safety, and so on. Understand the processes and the process approach. Make sure you do a risk-based thinking, which is, which is integrated. Out of this is derived the KPIs and the process KPIs and the improvement actions. So this is really part of the leadership responsibilities, including, of course, the 9.3 management review and the responsibility for 
continual improvement. So one of the things Omnix is trying to make popular is the idea of net zero and net positive. And what we, what we want to share with the audience is that if, you know, I don't know if in the food safety industry, as much as some of the other industry Omnix has worked in, if zero defects has been such a big deal. And folks, this is the good news. After working on zero defects since the mid to late 1980s, many of those industries are today in parts per billion, effectively zero defects. So this is the opportunity for the, uh, for the food industry. And But we're saying adopt not just zero defects, but zero food and quality incidences, zero accidents, zero missed customer commitments, which is delivery, zero energy, zero carbon, zero water, zero waste, zero human rights violations, labor infringements, zero corruption. If you are a world-class company, food company, this is what we encourage you to adopt. So to be certified to FSSE 22000, so you really need to implement ISO 22000 and integrate into it the prerequisite program, integrate into it HACCP, integrate into it the additional requirements of FSSE 22000. All right. We can't leave this uh, topic of FSSC 22000 which are, without talking about the mandatory regulated requirements of PCQI. What is this PCQI? Well, really, it comes from the Food Safety Preventive Controls Alliance. It's a standardized curriculum recognized by FDA. And um, they're asking, under the Preventive Controls for Human Food Regulation, responsibilities of an individual who does preventive, anyway, I'll say it, preventive controls qualified individual. What do they need to do? Perform and oversee the food safety plan, hint, hint, HACCP, validation of preventive controls, records review, and reanalysis of the food safety plan. So one of our colleagues, Steve Hufford, mentioned to me yesterday or the day before that he was just in, in, in an organization was trying to get certified. And what they had done is they had gotten rid of the HACCP, thinking all they needed was PCQI. And of course, he explained to them, that can't be. All right. The FSPCA was established in 2011, was to help and come up with this PCQI program. The FSA, FSMA and PCQI mandates that all food facilities implement a preventive controls program. Okay, includes evaluation of food safety hazards, steps and controls to prevent safe, those hazards, a system to monitor the controls, routinely records of the monitoring, and a recall plan. Folks, we thought it's important. We ask and give you some some. Uh, Questions and suggestions here. So you need to have a qualified individual who has successfully completed this training. By the way, they come back a little bit later and say, no, you don't need to have training. You need to show evidence of it being implemented. Uh, so look at this. However, the rule does not require any specific certification. So you really don't have to go to this one training. You can if you want. In general, FDA will assess the adequacy of the facility's food safety plan than an individual's qualifications. Deficiencies in the food safety plan may indicate that a PCQI may need some additional competency. Second question. In a large company with many facilities, do I need more than one PCQI? They said no. You, know, you can use a one PCQI for your multiple you need to have different plan, but the individual can be the same. Next, hey, uh, FDA, I have many safety certifications. Do I need PCQA? 
again, sort of a similar answer here. The, uh, the, it, it specifies, it says, that a PCQA is a qualified individual who has successfully completed training. Job experience may qualify an individual to perform these functions, right? Um, there are some differences in the requirements compared to the requirements of HACCP and other preventive-based food safety programs. Again, they said the FDA will assess the adequacy of the food safety plan than the documented qualifications. So same kind of answer. Are the HACCP and the PCQI the same? The HACCP system that many FDA regulated manufacturers have in place are the foundation. So your HACCP program then needs to evolve into your PCQI, or what we call the integrated HACCP and PCQI. So folks, Omnex recommends integrating the HACCP and the PCQI program into one approach. We're offering a three-day three -day PCQI integrated HACCP program. For those who haven't gotten a PCQI certification, we'll offer that to you. We're, we have a, a certified HACCP program. We're going to try and see if we can offer you also a HACCP certificate in the same program. But you can see that we haven't said that yet because we have to pass that by our certification agency. All right, folks, I'm going to continue here. Some thoughts here on the strategy for FSSC 22000 preparation. So what do we recommend? We recommend an implementation leader and a cross-functional steering committee. Discuss and plan the approach to FSSC 22000. Before you do the discovery or the gap analysis, really what you need to do is uh, create the strategy and your approach to FSSC 22000. Here are some of the strategies we suggest. Number one, implement ISO 22000 plus FSSC 22000 requirements. Well, that's actually a requirement. And, um, okay, add the PRPs on, based on scope. Most importantly, that the PCQI program needs to be integrated with HACCP. The second strategy we would recommend is taking an integrated management systems approach. So what, what do we recommend today? Folks, many years ago, if you took Omnix training in FSSE 22000, or the integrated training with IMS, integrated management systems, we said food safety, quality, environmental, and health and safety. Well, folks, we have progressed many years now. What Omnix recommends today is QMS, EMS, health and safety, social responsibility, and IT security. We're in the day and time where we all need to implement cybersecurity and IT security, so that's very important. Number four, implement an integrated approach for planning like Omnix's boss. Four, expanded leadership and need for culture change inside the organization where management understands they have to lead this one operating system. Then, of course, adoption of software. Folks, the world as we know it is changing dramatically. It is time for you to adopt electronic workflows and enterprise-wide either food safety slash quality or enterprise integrated management systems. So what then are the steps to transitioning? Discuss and plan the approach, con conduct your discovery gap analysis, create an implementation plan with steering committees and process owners. Very important to have process owners so it should not be seen as a responsibility of some food safety group. It should be understood that food safety is a collective responsibility and implementation of people in many different 
processes. Implement the key strategies and initiatives. Document your processes and procedures. Integrate that with your process approach in ISO 9001. Roll out the new system. Conduct internal audits. Conduct a management review. Conduct third-party audits. So you need an implementation plan like this. And this is what we develop when we do the discovery slash gap analysis. And with that, folks, let me summarize what we have talked to you about. FSSC 22000 has a revision 4 that has not yet been released. However, this revision is not aligned with the new ISO 22000. What we have, by the way, we have adding this, we are adding this as a package in our FSSC 22000 course. So we have added ISO 22000 to it. So what does it mean if it's FDIS? FDIS will pass into an IS or get turned down. But if it's FDIS, it never gets turned down. And it will get accepted as a uh, IS or international standard. When it's an FDIS, we can actually, you know, progress and, and, and write the class. All right. Are these, and um, number three, on the FSME and the PCQI remain as challenges, and the ind industry has not understood how to integrate it. And of course, we need to integrate it. And um, all these changes, well, I did miss talking about ISO 22000. I just will say the ISO 22000 has made significant changes and aligns very nicely with QMS, EMS, and OSS standards. And with all these changes, implementing FSC 22000 is going to be challenging. Take it as an opportunity. Take it as an opportunity to improve your management system. And lastly, Omnix recommends leadership involvement, and the organization considers, should consider adopting IMS, including enterprise quality or integrated management system software. Some thoughts here for you some books written by myself and my colleagues. I wrote some in with my colleagues. And the kinds of services we offer in food safety. And of course, most importantly, we also have integrated management systems courses. Folks, we have a time for a few questions. So let me take on some questions. What would be a good way to assess if a company needs to implement, okay, uh, this is 2202, what prerequisite does it need to satisfy in order to smoothly implement? All right. So what is the prerequisite? 22002 is really a food manufacturing standard. So if you're a food manufacturer, you would do, um, ISO 22000, the additional requirements of FSSC 22000, plus the PRP, the, uh, the food manufacturing PRP. And of course, Greg, and you have done this many times, when you do implement the HACCP, you try to put in the basic controls of the prerequisite programs there because those are part of the controls that you have in the first place. And um, you can come up with the idea of comprehensive controls. So this is what we would recommend in terms of the 20, 22002, ISO TS 22002. Question on what does PCQI stand for? Let me see if I can get that from one of my colleagues here, Crystal, PCQI, Preventive Control Qualified Individual, right? So the PCQI talks about that person that you need to have in your facility with the qualifications. When is the next FSSC training with Omnix? Folks, write, uh, write to us. We have planned the training we, have, we can do both on-site training and we also have, you know, open enrollment training 
Many of you have attended both, and you can definitely do that. All right, another question. We are a small food manufacturer uh, with a HACCP plan. Is PCQI necessary? Crystal, you want to take that question? Um, yes, it is necessary, um, as it being that you already have the foundation, which is the HACCP, uh, but you want to make sure that you have um, the interested parties. Can you hear me? That you that you have the interested parties in place. So your HACCP plan will be the foundation, but you want to have that additional training because when you're doing the third party audits and other um, regulatory uh, things that you have to uh, go for to keep uh, your certification active, this is what they'll be looking for. So just like when uh, FISMA first uh, rolled out, you guys had to register with the government to show that you guys were uh, the Food Modernization Act. Uh, that shows you guys were registered. This is kind of another uh, piece that goes along with that. Folks, we'll take this one last question. What is there a recommended sequence? Should I do, you know, FSSC 22,000 first? Should I do the FSMA first? Should I do the prerequisite programs first? And of course, what we would recommend is that you do all of this at the same time in an integrated manner in terms of, um, you know, if you did want to, of course, you could do ISO 22000, but it is very easy to do this all simultaneously. In fact, folks, when we implement ISO 22000, I mean, sorry, FSSC 22000, when our customers don't have, you know, ISO 9001, we tell them you can get ISO 9001 almost for free. That's what we have done and we have done implementations like that in the past. All right, with that, folks, thank you very much for attending the Omnix webinar. And um, we'll be offering more webinars time to time. Please do check in with us. And of course, you know, we have training for all these topics that we, that we do webinars on. And um, we welcome you to attend one of our webinars use us for a gap analysis, and or come to another webinar like this in the future. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Greg Gruska. And bye-bye, uh, everyone. Take care now.